Michael Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Vlast here at the Wasserman HQ. Joined by Mr. Harvey Horn. How are you, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? Very well, very well. Free food and free beers, mate. How could you not be? I was hoping I'd get the camera on a bit earlier so I could see you sorting your barn out. But... Oh, there we go. Yes, I'm oh, sorry. I had to drop it's that in there. One of them interviews, is it? Oh, mate. Go on then. Not be messing about. Um, yeah, it's swanky, isn't it? Like, you can tell, obviously, this ain't the be all and end all this office, but you can just tell by. You know, you're on the seventh floor, you're in central London, there's some important people about, there's some, you know, top quality press, including IFL, of course. You can just tell that this has got some, some substance behind it, can't you? 100%. I mean, you can tell it's a professional outfit. I've been here five minutes and it's, they make you feel, they, they look after you. They look after, like you said, <laughs> you joke about it, it's food, drink, everyone's, they've got people asking if you need anything. It's, it's just really professional. It's... Um, the interviews, well, the press went really well, press conference, some great new signings announced. Um, I think Wasserman Boxing, well, obviously Wasserman paired up with Sowland, is now going to be a global force. I'm pretty sure it's going to take over. Yeah, we just saw the press conference where they announced some of the new signings and got some of the um, fighters to come up to the front and say their piece. Just in terms of the stable, is it actually important that you're part of something where They've got good fighters alongside you where you're alongside the likes of, you know, Chris Eubank Jr. is up there. He's a household name in this country. Is it important to be alongside those sort of guys as well? Definitely. I mean, not only is, does it bring credibility to the firm and to, like, the, to the outfit, it's more the fact that fighters like me who aren't as established, who have got aspirations of being in their place, world champions, number one, it, we we can sort of use their success. We can jump on their shows when they box because we're part of the same stable. We can we can sort of get some of that success. We can use their success a little bit, not in a bad way, but we can just sort of. And we also have these fighters to look to and say, "That's where I want to be. What he's doing, where he's at, is where I want to be." Yeah, and obviously you talk about wanting to jump on their success and become a household name. Is it quite tough for you at your weight as well? Because everyone knows in boxing how talented you are. And like you said, you're not a mega household name yet. And you could be because of the talent you've got. But is it almost, well, we know it is, it's almost harder at the, the smaller weights as well. Because you're not just the lower weights, you are the lower category of the lower weights. So it's tough to become a household name, isn't it? 100%. I think it is, it is a bit tougher. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not worried. I'm not too focused on that sort of negative. I mean, I think if you're likeable enough, if you're personable enough and you're relatable enough and you've got the skill set, which I believe I do. I mean, if you're talking about skill set, it's without being big-headed, I've been undefeated domestically since I was 15. I've had my frame for a flyweight. You can see I'm, I'm very gifted in that sense. I don't have to cut weight. I'm very large. Uh, there's not many people domestically or globally that the same sort of height as me. And then it just comes down to a fact of putting it into place now. And I think, like I said, sorry, in answer to your question, yes, if you're personable enough, I might be little, but I've got good things come in little packages, don't they? So I've got a lot to offer. And I think once with the right exposure, with the right backing, like Wasserman Boxing, that's going to happen. Mate, I've been telling the birds that for years, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, the one thing we're looking forward to now is a debut because you have been out for so long and I can't imagine you'll be jumping into, you know, the biggest and best fight of your career because of the time out of the ring. But when can we expect to see you back in and just sort of getting the ball rolling again? All right, so we're back out October 2nd, SSE at Wembley on the undercard of Chris Eubank Jr., which would be a great bill. You've got people like Richard Reactor on there. We're doing a joint promotion with Boxer, the new outfit that hosted Ultimate Boxer. So that should be good. You've got, uh, from our stable, you have myself, Chris Eubank Jr., Linus Udofia, another great, great fighter with Wasserman. Um, so, and Matty Harris also, another big heavyweight, um, great heavyweight, like great kept secret, he's going to be dangerous. So it's going to be an exciting night and I think, like you said, not going to be the best fighter, best fighter of my life as in fight, fighter, as in opponent, but we're going to get a good eight rounds out, shake out, and then straight away, more, more likely than not December, we're going to go for the big one. When you say the big one, obviously, there isn't the biggest pool of talent domestically. And even though you've been out for a couple of years, people would class you as, you know, one of, if not the best fighters around that fly super flyweight in, in this country. So potentially, could you jump straight into international and look to become a world champion? Because I know, obviously, that's what you want to be. I could. I, I could. That's obviously an option. And obviously, depending on time and place, that is definitely viable. But when, like I said, a little a quick story, when I was about 12, 13, right, I had, uh, 
I just won like a, a shitty fight, you know, like one of them little horrible small wall fights, only about 25 kilo. Um, won it, we went out for a meal, we went to a mill and cart right the road from me. I was saying this earlier to one of the boys. Uh, went out the road, sat down there, um, have it all having a meal. My old man said to me, oh, he said, if you, you take this further, I said, I want that British title, I've loved it, I want that British title, it's unbelievable. And it stuck with me, you know, like it sort of stuck, it stuck in my head and I thought, you know what, I think for me now, it's been, I've realised now what a driving force that's been. So I think, yes, it, like, so I will grab that British title, I don't really want to jump levels, I want to get that British title, take it home, stick it above the table and say, here you go, dad, but, uh, yeah. But. So that's sort of, that has been your driving force genuinely for almost half your life then? Yeah, 100%. You think about it, 12, 13, I'm now 25, pushing 26. So, oh, yeah, half my life. But again, obviously I do it for my mum as well, but my mum doesn't like watching me fight. But that British side, you know, they're just them little snippets, them little nuggets to drive and force, that's been one for a very, very long time. Right, well, that'll be a lovely moment. We'll see if it does happen and, um, yeah, you know, we'll be there. Just finally, um, yeah, still with... Tibbs, he's still the most geezer combination going about you and Tibbs, and it <laughs> fuck me. Brilliant geezer combination, isn't it? Sometimes I say, when I've been in the corner, sometimes I have to like to check myself because I've got Mark and Jimmy Tibbs, obviously well established in the thing, well established in the game. Definite geezers, isn't they? A proper old school, but the boxing knowledge between them two, you can't really beat it. You look at like, when I look at the corner and my opponent, no disrespect, I just seem to have such a strong team such a winning mentality, you know, like a, a camp full of winners, a winning mentality, and that's, that's not going to not rub, on, rub off on you. So, the, again, the only way, with them two in my corner, the only way I can see it going is to the top. It's like a corner from, that could be the castle rise of the foot, right. I just <laughs> Well, now, look, like I said, um, yeah, be buzzing to see you as well. They've just released a one called Origins, haven't they? <laughs> it all works out. Yeah. Now, look, looking forward to seeing you um, back in the ring, obviously, been far too long um yeah and let's just see where the journey goes brilliant thank you very much cheers oscar